Shine.fm presents Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Here's Seth Tower Heard. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. We're talking about a program called Hope Central, which is an after-school program in various aspects of helping kids develop in Michigan. Anna Maria joins me, who is apparently somebody who needed something else to do in life. <laughs> you have six kids. You're a worship leader. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> six kids, actually, uh, pretty pretty young as far as uh, kids go. So yeah, yeah. 11 and under. Mm-hmm. Okay. 11 to 2, so yeah. And you're not a person who's mentally falling apart right now? <laughs> you know, the grace of the Lord is sufficient for me. Okay. Yeah, it really works. It really, really works. No, um, you know what, Seth? I believe that um, there there aren't a whole lot of things that I know how to do. Um, And the desire of my heart, of course, is to please the Lord and to fulfill his will for my life. Um, I've worked with children and youth all of my life, even as, you know, a child. I was always babysitting, you know, the people at the church as children, um, volunteered in the children's department. did camps and stuff like that at church, um, coming up as a teenager. And then I served as a children's pastor, as a youth pastor. And so when my husband and I moved here uh, to Lansing some years back, um, uh, almost eight years to be exact, uh, there was a shift that happened in the Lansing School District to where they took the arts programs out of the school. And so, just feeling like the nudge of the Lord, like you could be one of those parents who sit there and complain, or you can do something about it. And so um, I volunteered in my daughter's class. She was in kindergarten at the time. And um, it was to, you know, help them with Christmas and, you know, do some Christmas songs together. And then it was Mother's Day. Let's, you know, put a little something together for the mommies. And um, then it evolved into a school-wide production. I had written a production for the school to do and it was equipped with the curriculum and we were singing and dancing and then it was bilingual uh, because this school is a Spanish immersion school. Um, and so from there, I um, took this, you know, unction and this leading of the Lord to uh, to my church, actually this very building that we are in, South Church of the Nazarene. I took it to our pastors and said, listen, this is what we believe the Lord wants us to do, you know, to serve uh, the schools in our area uh, with this nonprofit. And so some of the very members who are still here today, um, they partnered with me and we formed a nonprofit. And that is Hope Central. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. And it's funny, you know, as someone who spent a lot of my uh, my life in media and actually a lot of my adult life on Shine FM, I've had a lot of people um, come to me and say, I have this idea for a nonprofit. It's one mm-hmm. of those things a lot of people think about at some mm-hmm. point, right? And the first thing I always ask is like, hey, is somebody else doing this well already that you can help um, or that you can be a part of mm-hmm. as opposed to having to build everything from the ground up? Uh, and in this case, it, it really seemed like there was a need and it wasn't being you know, met. Yeah. Um, and starting something like you know, in the, the ministry, nonprofit, give back space is one of the hardest things you will oh, ever do in your tell life. Tell me about it. Ever. Ben, tell me about it. You get an amen from this side of the church. Yeah, it, it, it was it was very difficult work um, because we were new to the area, my husband and I, and Lansing is very loyal. Um, so um, it was um, so it took some doing, you know, earning the trust of the families um, and of the you know the students and then the people in the school. Um, that, that took some doing as well. Uh, but what helped and what made it work was the commitment of the church to, you know, they wanted outreach. They wanted to be able to step outside of the walls of the church and be effective in the community. And so that's what helped to make it work. It, it lightened the load some, um, that there were a team of people who were ready to go out there and to touch and to literally do the work. We, we needed volunteers and they showed up. They came in numbers. It was just phenomenal to have that type of support. And the timing of the Lord was, was there working on our side as well. Um, and so, yeah, so we were able to pull it off. We've been running strong for five years. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, because it's one thing to get excited about something and like kind of get something out there, right? Like we got a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's and oh, we do have a website. You yeah. know, it's another yeah. thing to be going for a, a half a decade. Mm-hmm. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. We're spotlighting an after-school program uh, called Hope Central uh, in the Lansing, Michigan area. Uh, okay, so we've got a, we've got a lot of gaps to fill in here between <laughs> yeah. I was helping with the Christmas pageant at my kid's school yes. to I uh, I'm five years deep in a nonprofit. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. And so from you know the the gap in between would be um, so I thought in my mind I'm thinking okay arts are gone my children need some type of artistic expression. It's just good for their mental development, social skills, community, you know, uh, discipline, the whole nine, all of that. And so I had a choice that my husband and I, we could bear down and say, we're just going to do this in our house with our own children. But then what about my children's classmates? They're going to miss out on not getting this as well. So we could keep it close, you know, close to chest or we can open up and allow them to benefit from the same things, skills and um, talents and abilities that our children were going to um, have the privy of being exposed to. And so again, but that's how the Lord works though. Um, When he calls us or when he challenges us into obedience, it's never really just for us. You know, anything for the kingdom, what I've learned is that it never just benefits me that it really does, it stretches out and it goes forth and it blesses others. Like there's so many more people who get to benefit from our obedience when it's of God and when it's for the kingdom's sake. And that, that's been my barometer. Um, you know, what am I doing? Is this, is this self-centered, self-focused? Am I gonna be the, you know, the end beneficiary or do I get to touch and be the hands and feet? of Christ in the city and watch it transform lives. And that's literally what we've been seeing, you know, for the last five years that we're putting instruments in the hands of students who won't typically choose it, right? Yeah. Cause this is, these are students who are in the urban core of Lansing. Yeah, they're probably not looking at picking up a violin to play. Um, or uh, the challenge is that, you know, the parents, they can't afford to send their kids to drums or drum class or vocal classes or acting or dance classes. You know, if it comes between, you know, a pair of shoes or food in the kitchen or, hey, why don't we just go get some drumstick? They're gonna choose food and clothes every time. And so it shouldn't be, they shouldn't have to choose between the two because all of this, it it takes all of this to develop and make uh, good citizens. Um, And so, yeah, so, we, we are putting this back. We're giving this opportunity uh, to more students and to other families so that they can grow and develop and become uh, better people in our society. So um, so that's what we're doing. I, I want to go back to something you said there, mm-hmm. right there about making sure it's for the benefit of others, because, you know, I've seen, you know, Christians and non-Christians alike think that, oh, I'm going to go do this thing. But Okay, it's kind of helps somebody, but it's also because, like, I want to look cool. And <laughs> when that's your motivation, somebody wants to get hurt. Yeah. Bottom line. Oh, like, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. like, the I, I'm going to quote unquote help so I can look cool. And it's mm-hmm. like somebody just winds up getting burned. Yeah. And so the first thing I think is always just ask God where your heart's at, mm-hmm. you know, who you're really doing this for. And, and nobody can know that but you, right? Yes. Like, uh, I've, I've met people who have faked it really well of like, I'm helping, <laughs> you know, I'm helping to help. Well, later on we found out you're just helping to look cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Or to, you know, for the Facebook posts or the social media, um, Hey, look what I've done. Oh, but I'm so humble, but look what I've done. But I'm so, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that whole dichotomy is there. But I don't know. I think at the end of the day, um, Seth, the desire of our hearts, um, is that we would please the Lord. And we want to do the thing that pleases him most. And when we take care of who he cares for, and we know that he cares for the widows, the orphans, uh, for those who are less fortunate. Um, you know, even Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. But that gives us so much opportunity to bless the Lord and to serve the Lord by looking out for those um, who are in those situations. And what better way to be the hands and feet of Jesus um, by saying, hey, we have something to offer. 
and we come in the name of the Lord. Um, and while um, we, you know, yes, it is singing and yes, it is dancing and yes, it is acting. And yes, it's video production and audio. Uh, we are still coming in the name of the Lord. Um, and it is to share and to be loving and to be kind, to restore dignity, you know, to our youth and children. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, just wanting to bless the Lord in all of this. And when you said, you know, to restore dignity, I think, you know, whether it's arts, whether it's sports, whether it's, I, I don't know, just just really crushing it in one area of academics, mm -hmm. man, there's something, and I'm not a child psych psychologist or anything, but it seems <laughs> like there's something really important that it's somewhere along the way you just find something you're good at and you're able to develop as you go through elementary school, junior high, and high school. It seems to be really important that you have something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what it does is it, it affirms that you're not here by mistake. And so sometimes the notion, and I don't know if you remember this, but when I was growing up, there was a saying, children are to be seen and not heard, right? And so it was like, just be quiet. Don't say, don't make any noise. Don't ruffle. Don't, you just be there. And so that affects, you know, it affected my outlook on life. It made me feel unimportant or invisible. And so we know that that leads to a lot of social and emotional issues. Now, I'm not a child psychologist either, <laughs> but I've worked long enough, you know, with children and youth that I know the signs and I've recognized how even that type of mentality, you know, what it's done um, uh, um, on a social level or in the development of a kid. Like somebody like me, I was so shy. Well, I really wasn't shy, but I wasn't given the tools to be, um, to feel confident or to have high self-esteem. So I struggled a lot as a child and as a youth and wondered if I was loved, if I was valued, you know, will anybody notice if I'm gone? Like all, and I know that those questions are still out there for children and youth, especially now that we are, we are becoming a less and less sociable um, generation. Like everything is technological and video and camera and, you know, and so there's a lot of social skills that are being lost, which means that there's an unmet need that's happening in the hearts of our children. So what do we do with that? We can't just sit by and let that go, right? Yeah, and you know, also when, when you talk about this as far as preparing kids for just like the world they're gonna live in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we found that um, the Apple ne isn't necessarily looking for the most brilliant, uh, you know, software programmer. Google mm -hmm. is not looking for the most genius engineer that is the most engineering engineer that's ever engineered. <laughs> um, what they're looking for a lot of times is people who know how to collaborate with others, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who know how to overcome conflict, resolve conflict, get along with other people, and who also have the, the creative skills to be able to make something without following step-by-step -step instructions. And the arts teach all of those things, which I think is so amazing. Oh, yes. And what we've seen um, over the years, um, so one of the, a couple of the components that are involved with Hope Central is that we teach our students and we prepare them to go back out into the community and they share their talent. And so your, the classes that they're taking is not just so that they could be seen, but they're literally, we're preparing them to give. And so um, we do three productions a year or three events a year. And two of those events is we take the students to senior facilities where they serenade the seniors, they perform <laughs> for them, and then they spend time with them. Yeah. Uh, they make, eye, and they, they are instructed. You make, look them in their eye. You can handshake if you're comfortable with giving hugs. That's okay too. Uh, but we want you to spend time with them and let them know that you see them. And so I've watched with my own eyes some of the most problematic students in our program soften. Their hearts soften. Some of them walk out with tears in their eyes like, that hurt my heart that nobody's coming to visit them. And they didn't want me to leave. And like, I don't want to leave. Um, so just seeing those type of heart moments, for that to happen in the life of a child now, that means that they become sensitive enough. So when, as they're getting older, they're making different choices when there's peer pressure around. And, you know, they, they run up against that, hey, go push that person down. Or whatever the temptation is to do something bad or to do something evil, they have a reference point now. I don't want to 
want to do that because <laughs> that's a real yeah. person. Like I remember when we, you know, Hope Central, and we went and we spent time with other people. And no, I can't do that because now their heart, there's a place of reference in their heart now. Um, and so I've seen that. And that, that's one of our goals is that we want to, we want them to grow up to be people of compassion. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. We're with Anna Maria of Hope Central in Lansing, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about um, arts, technicality, stuff you can learn after school, but also yeah. with a broader uh, picture of that looks like for a community. And mm -hmm. actually, as you were talking, oddly enough, I, I thought about Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. um, the, the you know famous boxer, mm -hmm. one of the, the greatest of his sport to ever live. And what most people probably don't know about Mike Tyson is that he was in um, juvie at the age of like nine or 12 or, mm -hmm. you know, a, a pretty young age to be in trouble with the law. Mm -hmm. And a coach found him and recognized some incredible talent in him. And what happened uh, was that he said, if you can be good in here for 30 days, uh, you can, um, you know, I, I'll train you. And mm -hmm. he went from there to being one of the greatest, um, you know, iconic sports figures. Mm -hmm in American culture ever. And it wasn't unfortunately until he, he didn't, both of his parents had passed away. And mm -hmm. when his trainer um, died, he, he went, you know, pretty crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. tattooed his face. And kids mm -hmm. don't get a face tattoo unless right. you're sure you never want a job ever. <laughs> and don't ever. bite anybody's ear. <laughs> and also that. <laughs> when you feel this bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what's amazing ab about what we're learning now about development is that the research is showing that just a few hours a week you of a this. really positive influence in a kid's life that may have a lot of other things going against them actually can be the turning point. And Mike Tyson is one of those examples. Mm -hmm. and although it was sports and not, you know, the arts, the exact same thing applies. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I hear a lot that, you know, when it comes to the urban community, you know, people say, oh, well, you guys should do something. You, you need to do something, you know, with these kids and all of the violence. And, well, I'm one of the ones who have. We are doing something and we are providing opportunities and space for these students to come to a safe environment and to be loved on. You know, one of the things that we, um, that's a part of our program is our community time. And that's where we interact, we are socializing and we are teaching those soft skills, the, the hard skills. We have this um, saying that we do. And I started off by saying, we are a family. And then all of the students chime in and as a member of the family, it is my responsibility to protect your heart. Wow. Yeah. So I want that to sink in for a second. Because now with bullying taking places in our schools at such an alarming rate and students, the suicide rates in our schools are going up and up. Well, we're teaching our students that have a responsibility to protect your heart. And so what that means is that when I see something out of place or when I hear something out of line that is not protecting your heart, I'm going to defend you. I'm not going to sit back and watch. I'm not going to laugh. You don't get to be the butt of my jokes because I'm going to protect your heart. They learn that at Hope Central. We teach them that at Hope Central so that when it's now time for auditioning and they're now vying for the same role, I don't have to be mean spirited towards you. I don't have to talk you down because I have a responsibility to protect your heart. And if in fact, these students are not getting that at home, they're getting it somewhere. They're getting it at Hope Central. They're learning this. This is Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. We're talking about Hope Central, which is a nonprofit teaching uh, the arts and uh, technical skills as well in Lansing, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, what I love about what you said right there is that one of the things that I think it's harder for a school to teach and that needs to come from somewhere else mm -hmm. is just the resilience to like lose at something and be okay mm -hmm. and go get better at it. So when you say, you know, you got two kids vying for the same role, you think about, um, you know, one of the kids in your life, your own or, or, you know, one at church or in the family or whatever, and how much kids just wind up being crushed oh, from not making the play goodness. or, you know, and it's like, well, what do I have now that I didn't, you know, do this? I didn't make the travel team, mm -hmm. whatever. And the the skill that's probably not going to continue, um, 
you know, there, there are some exceptions, but odds are your kid's not going to be a professional actor. Your kid's <laughs> probably not going to be a professional hockey player. Um, but your kid is, without a doubt, going to have to learn to get up mm -hmm. after something in life knocks them down. Absolutely. You know, we, um, so for the last three years, we were in partnership with Disney um, musicals in schools and with the Wharton Center. Um, and so that was just a huge blessing that God allowed us to experience. And so um, one of the expectations is that all of the students audition, no matter what. And I got some serious pushback because everybody is not a stage person. That's why we have the video classes and the audio classes, because there's just some people who like to be behind the scenes. Well, rule is, rule is, everybody audition because there's a bigger lesson here that you know we want them to learn, but who has time to explain all that? Everybody auditions. I want you to know, Seth, that one of our, our first year, we did Lion King, and we found our Simba in our video production class. And I wanted to share with you what his mom said, is that my son was so depressed. She said, I was losing my son, and I did not know how to get him back. And he came home and he told me that you were making him audition, for the Lion King, and so I said, well, if that's what Miss Horn said, then you gotta do it. And by the way, making. <laughs> yeah, she's making me audition. Oh yeah. Um, and so he did, and he discovered a talent that he didn't know he had. And this kid, this mom says to me, with tears coming down her face, I have my son back. I got my son back. Another mom, um, her, her son, ADHD, and Michael did not want to audition, but I made him audition anyway. He still went back to doing, you know, the audio. But his mom said this was the one thing that he felt successful at, that he could do well. And you gave him, you created that space for him. So again, we're looking at students who would not normally have the opportunity because they were being pushed and challenged to do something that they hadn't been able to do before. They've risen to the occasion. They're, they are now walking with confidence and they feel like they have something to contribute to society. Those are the kids who are not going to resort to going off to the side and doing things that are contrary and that are detrimental or that are hurtful to themselves or even to others because now they've found something to connect to, something valuable to connect with. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Hope Central is a nonprofit in Lansing, Michigan, teaching um, arts and technical skills and mm -hmm. sometimes dragging that kid from the side of the room and putting <laughs> him in the, Get out there. <laughs> the middle you of the play. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to wrap this up talking mm -hmm. about you because we started off with how this got going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we've talked about the results you see out of kids. You have six kids. Yes. One of them is a, a foster child. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> and you got this going on. You're a worship leader. Mm -hmm. um, you said that there's only a few things you're good at. And so you to try to stay in those lanes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It has always been children and youth ministry and the performing arts. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I've tried to sell um, and be a salesperson. I mean, I've tried other things and they don't work well for me. Um, so I just want to stay in my lane. Um, and if I can, not if, but with what God has given to me to be able to um, more than just inspire. I want to see people thrive and live um, and live the life that God wants them to live, that life more abundantly um, w with joy and peace. Because, you know, life is going to happen. We're going to have hardships and trials. The Bible says they are sure to come. Um, but to, uh, to know um, our creator, that he has made provision for life and for love and for hope and for peace and for healing, um, and that he could use the arts to draw people into him, then that's, that's what I wanna do. That's what I wanna continue to do. Um, I'll share this story with you as we are concluding, Seth. Um, this was some years ago when I was in Miami, Florida, and I was invited to sing at this event for, um, for a youth pastor. They had asked me to sing and I said, okay. And that day, my sister and I had one of the worst fights ever. <laughs> we fought hard. And I didn't even wanna go to the event anymore, but because I promised that I would, I show up. And I'm like, Lord, this is, ugh, 
this is just the worst conditions to ever sing in, but I got to do this. Lord, would you please, you know, use me if you can. And so after I sang, this lady walks up to him and um, she, uh, she shares, well, first of all, she didn't speak any English. So she has a translator and tears are coming down her face and she's crying and she's like, and through the translator, she said, your song ministered to me so much. And I was like, oh, well, thank you. You know, so we're kind of, and then I was like, wait a minute. I sang in English. <laughs> you don't speak any English. Like, so, yeah. what, what's going on here? Like, how? And she said she felt everything that I said. Even though she couldn't understand the words, she felt what I said. Only God could do that. Only God can do that. And it was those types of moments in my life, just even as a teenager that I experienced in my walk with the Lord, that he was transforming lives through the arts. And that if he could do it there, that he could do it anywhere. If I yield to him and if I say yes, and I'm watching him transform lives of students all over the Lansing area as a result of teaching these classes. We have a staff of, um, of instructors of about seven people and um, getting to work with them and, and uh, preparing them to pray over their students. And, you know, what is the scripture for the year that you're going to speak over your students' lives? Uh, that kind of thing. And so just watching God take Hope Central from, you know, my kindergartner's class teaching at Christmas time to what it is now has truly been, you know, the work of the Lord. And I just give him glory for it. This has been Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Anna Maria of Hope Central mm -hmm. in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, if we could just get a quick end of show shout out here about volunteering, about yes. helping out, about being a resource. Yes. Uh, maybe even about referring a kid that may mm -hmm. need this, that Absolutely. you know from church or wherever. Absolutely. So our website is hope-central.org. Um, we are on Facebook, but like you mentioned, I'm a mother of six children. So I am horrible when it comes to social media. Um, my updates are not as frequent as they should be or as they could be, but you can definitely reach me there. I do try to check in at least maybe once or twice a week um, to see what's going on. Um, or you're welcome to reach me via text or give me a call, 517-442-3180 uh, for Hope Central. Yeah. And if you're checking out this uh, show digitally, you can grab the links in uh, the show notes or the description. If you missed any part of this episode on the radio, you can always grab it in full. You can check out the video uh, up on Facebook or YouTube by searching Shine.fm, or you can uh, subscribe to the audio by searching Shine.fm podcast via iTunes or wherever you download podcasts. This is Shine.fm. That was Stronger Together a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Subscribe to the Shine.fm podcast to catch every episode of Stronger Together, available on the iTunes podcast app and wherever podcasts are available.